Hello everyone, Phoenix Knight here, welcome to the channel, and welcome back to the fall campaign for Arkham Horror, the card game. We picked up five experience from Return to the Pallid Mask last week and spent it. So, now we're on to the seventh scenario, Return to Blackstar's Rise. First up, let's set the scene. Scenario 7, Blackstar's Rise. The island commune of Mont saint michel lies off the northwestern coast of France. It is beautiful, elegant, and enigmatic, a place out of a fairy tale. Only this tale is one of horrors and madness. During low tide, you would be able to reach the island on foot by crossing the tidal causeway that emerges from the sea. However, by the time you reach the coast, the tide is much higher than you'd anticipated. Dark clouds cover the sky, and a distant crash of thunder signals the start of an oncoming storm. You find a boat whose captain is willing to take you to the island, and prepare for the ritual to come. Check campaign log. If Ashley Clark is listed under VIPs interviewed, proceed to Ashley's information. Otherwise, skip to setup. Checking the campaign log. Ashley Clark was one of the NPCs we talked to at that party way back in Return to the Last King, so we get her information. Ashley's information. You recall the night where this all began, and your thoughts drift to the mesmerizing song Ashley sang that night. Somehow you remember the lyrics perfectly after all this time, and its haunting melody is ingrained in your mind. Above the city, the storm clouds rage, and waves crash through the gilded cage. Below the earth, the salt water seeps, the shadows fall as the red sun sleeps. Studying the island that lies before you, illuminated by flashes of lightning and assaulted by tumultuous waves, you can't help but wonder if Ashley was singing about this very moment. During this scenario, as a free triggered ability, free action triggered ability, an investigator may remove one doom from an agenda in play. Group limit once per game. Proceed to set up. Ashley's... That's enough out of you. So that gives us the ability, like it mentioned, to once per game we can remove a doom from one of the agendas in play. We'll come back to that idea in a minute. But... Next, let's go ahead and remind everyone what the tarot reading was. So on the good side, we left Judgment 20. When the game begins, replace a skull in the cast bag with a zero. Swap them back after the game ends. I've already done that as part of setup last night. On the bad side, this was the right card, right? Yes. The bad card we flipped was the Emperor 4. During the first combat test each investigator performs each round, they get minus one combat. I didn't mind it. That was basically a snap flip. Because these, these two ladies don't do very much with their combat. Mandy's is a one and Jacqueline's is a two. So, they like I said, they don't do much with their combat at all. So I didn't mind flipping that. Next up, we'll take a look at starting hands. And Jacqueline will be our lead investigator. So her... Her hand, of course, has one of the cards, one of the few cards that uses combat. And Spectral Razor. Two costs to play, will, combat, and commit. Fight plus will for the attack. Immediately before the attack, you may engage the attacked enemy. This attack deals plus one damage, plus two instead if the enemy is non-elite. Emergency Cash Level 2. Gain three resources and draw a card. This looks like a really good one of the first actions of the game. Clairvoyance, level five. Four costs to play. Will, two lore on commit. Uses three charges. Investigate using, as an action, spend a charge to investigate using will instead of lore. Plus three will for the investigation. If you succeed, discover two additional clues at your location. But if you pull a good symbol, take two horror. Word of Command level 2, 2 cost to play. I can name a spell card and search my deck for a copy of the named card and draw it, shuffling my deck afterward. And... 
Power Word, which has all kinds of customizable abilities. I'll go through all of that when we, if we actually play it, but I'm not sure we will. As for Mandy's hand, her hand starts off with a couple of multi-class cards. Janae Beauregard, level 3. Five co Intrepid Explorer. Five cost to play, lore and agility on commit. You get plus one of each. And during your turn, after you move to a location, exhaust her to move a clue or a non-lead enemy from a connecting location to yours, or vice versa. Eon Chart, level 4. Two cost to play, lore, agility, wild card on commit. Uses three secrets. During your turn, exhaust Eon Chart and spend a secret. Choose and take two of the following actions in any order. Move, evade, or investigate. And you get, I should get both of them their resources before we go too much further. I realized I didn't do that as part of setup last night, and normally I do. Three, four, and five. We have no trauma to speak of, so we're all clear there as well. Next up we have Dream Diary, Dreams of an Explorer. Two costs to play, will, agility, and commit. Only include this in your deck, yada, 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 which we did that during Return to Circle Undone last year. While you're at a location with at least four Shroud, your Essence of the Dream gains two extra wild cards. And as a reaction, when your turn begins, search your bonded cards for Essence of the Dream and add it to your hand. Quick thinking with a wild card on commit, and if the skill test is successful by two or more, after it resolves, immediately take an action as if it were your turn. This action doesn't count toward the number of actions you can take each turn. And something that'll probably combo pretty well with Eon's chart. In Ariadne's Twine, uses zero secrets. It's a zero cost to play, two or on commit. Secrets on Ariadne's Twine can be spent as if they were on any asset controlled by an investigator at your location. As a fast action to exhaust Ariadne's Twine, move one secret from an asset you control to your resource pool as a resource, or vice versa. And it takes up an arcane slot. Next up, we'll take a look at the Act and Agenda decks, but that's really a misnomer, because as I mentioned briefly, we will have two agendas. So our first agenda... is the Tide Rises. Your boat docks at Port de Lavance, but with the rising tide and torrential rain flooding the boat, the street, the boat's captain isn't keen on sticking around. He tells you he'll come back for you in the morning. You tell him not to bother. You probably won't be around by then. As a free action, the investigators spend one per investigator or two clues as a group to place one doom on this agenda, and this can cause the current agenda to advance. Each investigator gains two resources, group limit once per round. Then for our other agenda, the ritual begins. Dark storm clouds swirl overhead. A vortex of eldritch energy rages in the center of the storm. The ritual has begun. The gate may appear above the abbey or below it. You must choose which route to pursue and reach the gate before Haster's agents do. As a free action, the investigators spend one per investigator clues as a group, place one doom on this agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. Each investigator draws one card. Group limit once per round. That one time where I sp spoke the name of the king in yellow, I'm not t as I've talked about before, while I'm going through all of this intro stuff, with especially with the audio recordings that I use, those were recorded back when I didn't have a... Path to Carcosa campaign active at the time. So I'm not incurring horror for those or for anything I do now while I'm setting the scene. Once I declare start of game, however, then we will be under the then we will be under the rule of not to speak the name of the king in yellow. So I just want to make sure that all gets explained so that all makes sense. But last up, the ladies will move over to the map, so let's join them over there. Here's our first look at the starting map. So here's Porte de Lavance, which is where our ladies start. This gateway serves as an entrance to the Grand Rue during high tide, 
when a boat is the only means of reaching the city, this will flip into Shroud of Three, Two Clues. Two actions to move one Doom from one agenda deck to the other. Then place two clues on Porte de l'Avance from the token bank. I'll get the two clues out for that. All right. I will go through locations as we move into them, of course, or when they become relevant for us. But we're all set to start this scenario. I think we'll lead off with Jacqueline, and we'll start off down at her play area. As you've probably guessed, I have declared start of game at this point, so now we can no longer speak the name of the king in yellow. Mandy will exhaust ancestral knowledge to draw her first skill from under it, so Mandy will draw. Deduction. This is timely and kind of changes the plan I had for the turn. Two lore on commit, and if you're successful while investigating a location, discover an additional clue at that location. Two additional clues if you succeed by two or more. Action one for Jacqueline, however, will be to play out Emergency Cash level two to gain three resources and draw a card. So Jacqueline will go up to eight resources and then draw. Occult Theory. While it's in your hand or committed to a skill test, it gains lore icons equal to your will and will equal to your lore. So it's giving her three will and five lore. Action two, Jacqueline will pay four resources to play out her clairvoyance. I'll go get the three charges for that. And then action three will take us over to the map. Action three, I'll adjust that a little bit, but Jacqueline will move up to the Grand Rue. We'll see what we've got here. Mont Saint Michel's main road courses through around the abbey, lined with shops and homes for fishermen and farmers. This flips into Shroud of One, Two Clues. Forced, after you succeed at a skill test by one or less while investigating Grand Rue, place one doom on the agenda with the most doom. If they are tied for the most doom, choose one to place one doom on. So we'll grab the two clues there. And that will do it for Jacqueline's turn. Mandy for action one. She will spend all five of her resources to play out Janae Beauregard, Intrepid Explorer. Uh, let me just look at that. After you move to a location exhauster, so we can either move a clue from a connecting to ours or vice versa. I, si I think we'll be taking advantage of that right away. Because for action two, Mandy will move up to the Grand Rue. Then she'll exhaust Janae, once I put that back down, to bring a clue from Porte de l'Avance up to Grand Rue. And then for action three, she's going to investigate and commit deduction to try to pull all three clues off the location in one shot. So she's up five, six, seven, eight. She's up seven. Do I want the... Do I want to put Jacqueline's ability behind this? It seems like a waste, but I do want to make sure I get those clues off the location in one shot. So, yeah. I think I am going to throw Jacqueline's special ability behind this. Especially since this is also our only skill test this phase. Or this round of One, two, three. Okay. First token up. That's a minus one. Second token up. A plus one. And the rune. I'm going to cancel the minus one and the rune, which will reveal the plus one. And that'll give Mandy all three clues. I'm not going to spend the clues to put the Doom on an agenda yet. Although I'm going to have to make a decision pretty soon about which agenda I'm going through. But that will do it for Mandy. That will do it for the, for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, we have no enemies in play right now as it's the first turn of the game. 
So I will flip the, I'll flip everything over. We'll get everything reset. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline gains one resource and goes to five. Mandy gains one resource and goes back to one. Jacqueline draws. Drawn to the flame. Zero cost to play. Lore will on commit. Draw the top card of the encounter deck. Then discover two clues at your location. Mandy draws. Another quick thinking. We've got one of those in her hand already. Mythos phase is going to work a little bit different in this agenda. So we're placing a doom on an agenda, but we can pick which one we want to put it on. And I think here we're going to take the... I think here we're going to take the high path. So we're going to put it on the tide rises. Jacqueline draws. Big Yellow's Gaze. Peril Hidden. As a revelation, secretly add Big Yellow's Gaze to your hand. Forced. After one or more Doom is placed on the C agenda, which we're up working on the A agenda right now, take two Horror and discard Big Yellow's Gaze from your hand. Mandy draws. Twisted to his will. If there's no Doom in play, Twisted to his will gains Surge. Otherwise, to test Will X where X is the amount of Doom in play, and we have one in play right now. If you fail, discard two random cards from your hand. Right now we're up two, and to try to get a tempo swing on this, I'm up three. So I'm going to risk a quick thinking on this to see if I can get a tempo swing and maybe pick it up a little bit. So Mandy's up three. As long as she pulls less than a... If she pulls a minus one or less or smaller, she'll get an extra action out of this. Rune, we had this earlier, but Jacqueline was able to cancel it. Mandy, unfortunately, doesn't. Rune is reveal another token. If you fail, place one doom on each agenda. Oh, fun. That's a minus one. So not only do we not fail, we actually get an extra action, which will take us over to the map. For Mandy's quick thinking action, we're actually going to move up to the outer wall. We'll see what we've got here. The outer wall of the city defends it from the wrath of the tides and also from conquering invaders. This flips into... Wait a second. Oh, we need another arrow going across as well because there's a connection there as well. So this flips into Shroud of Four, Two Clues. While the current C agenda has more Doom on it than the current A agenda, double the number of skill icons committed to skill tests at the outer wall. Waves slam against the stone walls, water spraying onto the pathways above. If you don't act quickly, even these stalwart walls won't be able to stop the rising tide. Victory One. Currently, the A agenda has more Doom on it, so we don't get to double the skill icons there. But that is... But that's at least another location for more clues on it. So, before we leave the Mythos phase, Mandy will exhaust Ancestral Knowledge to draw another skill. Um, actually, before we do that, we could exhaust Janae to send a clue back Jacqueline's way, and... I think I will, actually... Because after I move to a location, I can exhaust Janae to move a clue or a non-elite enemy from a connecting location to mine or vice versa. And I'll move a clue over to Grand Rue. Then I'll exhaust Ancestral Knowledge to draw another skill from under it. So Mandy will draw. Momentum. After this skill test is successful, reduce the difficulty of the next test you perform this phase by X. 
where x is the amount this skill test succeeded by to a maximum of 3. That will do it for the mythos phase. Investigation phase now, and I think our ladies will both stay right here at the map, and we'll start with Jacqueline. Action one, Jacqueline will investigate. She's up two. And if we succeed by one or less, we get to put a doom on the A agenda. A minus one means we get the clue and we get to put another doom on the A agenda because that's the one that has the most doom on it right now. Action two, Jacqueline will move to the broken steps. We'll take a quick look at this and then that will bring one of our unrevealed locations to being relevant. Bolt of lightning solo at the abbey above. A path of long winding steps leads up the hill, branching into multiple routes as you draw nearer to the abbey. And here we find Shroud of four, no clues. Forced, after you enter the broken steps, you must either lose an action or draw the topmost omen treachery in the encounter discard pile. We unfortunately don't have an omen in the treachery in the discard pile, so we have to lose an action. Which, action one was to investigate, action two to move, so Jacqueline's turn will just be over because she'll lose her third action. That will do it for Jacqueline. Mandy's turn, action one, she'll start with an... an Basic investigation. She's up two, and that's where I'll test. Skull is... Skull is minus X, where X is the highest amount of doom on an agenda in play, which is two, but Mandy is still able to get the clue off of the outer wall. Action two, she'll move up to the north tower, and we'll see what's here. Shroud of two, two clues, or four clues. Forced, after one or more doom is placed on the C agenda deck, each investigator at north tower takes one horror. Wet stone, step, stone steps lead higher up the path toward the abbey. Above, black storm clouds threaten to overtake the island. Victory won. And I forgot to look at the abbey church after Jacqueline moved into, after moved, Jacqueline moved into the broken shore steps. I'll do that once I get the four clues for the north tower. Three, four. The abbey church, which is relevant because Jacqueline's at the broken steps, has on the unrevealed side. The path leading to the Abbey Church is blocked. As an additional cost for you to enter the Abbey Church, investigators at Broken Steps must spend three per investigator clues as a group, or six. You'll have to find a path not blocked by debris and rubble in order to reach the Abbey. As for Mandy's third action, she is going to... Uh, I think she's going to investigate. She's up four. Minus two gets her another clue. So that'll bring her up to five. And then that's as a group, yes. So Mandy will spend this clue as a free action. And then Jacqueline will spend the will spend her clue as well. We'll put another doom on the tide rises. And then each investigator gains two resources. So Mandy goes to three. Jacqueline gains goes to seven. Then that will do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, we still have no enemies in play. So we'll reset everything. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline gains one resource and goes to eight. Mandy gains one resource and goes to four. Jacqueline draws. 
Another emergency cash level two. That's very handy. Mandy draws. The Eye of Truth. Four wild cards on commit. If the skill test is on a treachery and the test is successful, add that treachery to the victory display and attach the Eye of Truth to it. When, while attached, the Eye of Truth contributes its skill icons to all tests on copies of the attached treachery, and we'll go through the flavor text when we put it out. Mythos phase, we'll put our fourth doom on the tide rises. Jacqueline will draw. Worlds merge. Revelation test will three. If you fail, if agenda 1C is in play, take a horror and discard one card from your hand. If 2C is in play, two horror and two cards from your hand. If act 3C or agenda 3C is in play, three horror and discard three cards from your hand. It's only agenda 1C right now, so it would be one horror and discard one card from your hand. Right now, she's up two. Is there anything I want to commit? There is not. And unfortunately, I can't voluntarily discard Big Yellow's Gaze, which would be nice to do, but anyway, Jacqueline is up two. Elder Sign. Let's take a look at Jacqueline's Elder Sign. I've got a copy of her card over here, so the Elder Sign is more legible. Plus one, if this effect is canceled or ignored, draw one card. But of course, we're not ignoring the Elder Sign because we didn't throw her ability behind this. So we're all clear there. Mandy will draw. Spires of Carcosa. Revelation, attach to your location, then place two Doom on that location. If there's no Doom on attached location, discard Spires of Carcosa. As an action, investigate. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues here, remove one Doom from attached location. Well, that actually works out for us a bit. I gotta double check with the dual agendas. All of the Doom in play is removed. Okay, so free action, we're actually going to be busy. First, Mandy will exhaust Ancestral Knowledge to pull a skill from under it, so Mandy will draw. Eureka will lower Agility on Commit. If you're successful, the investigator performing this test searches the top three cards of their deck for a card, draws it, and shuffles their deck. Then, Mandy will spend two clues to put the fifth Doom on the Tide Rises, and remember, because it's got the Ancient Evils Clause on it, this effect can cause the current agenda to advance. So we've put our fifth Doom up, which means we get to flip this over, so we find... Red Dawn's Surmise. The tide continues to rise rapidly. The outer walls of the village assaulted by hurricane force winds and freezing rain. The storm only grows in intensity as the evening turns to night. Soon, the tide water will completely flood the city. Shuffle the encounter discard pile and both set aside copies of Tidal Terror into the encounter deck. Check the current C agenda. If Agenda 1C has two or fewer Doom on it, mark one conviction in your campaign log. If Agenda 1C has three or more Doom on it, mark one doubt in your campaign log. If Agenda 1C is not the current C agenda, do not mark any conviction or doubt. So we've marked, so Agenda 1C has no Doom on it right now. So we mark off a conviction in the campaign log. Okay. And then our new Agenda 2. Let the storm rage. The angry sea continues to barrage the island. Waves crash against the walls and rain pelts the rooftops. Is the rising sea the key to opening the path? If so, you have no choice but to let the storm rage on. Each copy of Ancient Evils gains Surge. As a fast action, as a free action, the investigators spend one per investigator clues as a group. Place one Doom on this agenda. This effect can cause the agenda to advance. Each investigator gains two resources, group limit once per round. Now, I, the way I think this works is because it's on a new, it's, a, it's basically the same ability, but it's a new copy on a new agenda. So I think we get to activate it again. That's how, I'm, that's how I'm going to rule for it. So I'm going to spend, 
Actually, before we do that, I need to get the discard pile and the two copies of Title Terror. There we are. Okay. I will shuffle all of that into the discard, or shuffle that with the discard pile back into the deck. Now that I know I'm shuffling a couple enemies in, now I kind of want to send Jacqueline into her deck to find a way to defend herself. Also, after we advanced that, Spires of Carcosa would lose its doom and be discarded. So that would get shuffled back in as well. Because Doom from the other agenda isn't removed, but... Doom from the other agenda isn't removed, but everything else is. Okay, so we need to go get... We need to find more clues here in a hurry. There's actually one up at... Actually... No, I think I know how we can get get these clues. I can, I can work around this. I want to keep the clues so I can get into the Abbey Church. So the encounter deck is all shuffled up. That will do it for the Mythos phase. Investigation phase next, and we'll start with Mandy heading over to the map. Action one for Mandy will be to move down to the Grand Rue, since they're connected. Then she'll exhaust Janae to pull the clue from Port de Lavance up to Grand Rue. Action two, she'll investigate up five. Rune is going to require us to reveal another token, and if we fail, place one Doom on both agendas. Minus two means she doesn't fail, so we get the clue off of Grand Rue. And then action three... She will spend two resources to play out Eon Chart. I'll get the three charges out for that. I don't think I'm going to burn any of them just yet. No, I don't think I'm going to. So I will do it for Mandy. Jacqueline's right here at the map. She will move up to the North Tower for Action 1. Action 2, she's going to pop a charge of clairvoyance and throw her special ability behind this. We gotta make sure I get those clues off the location. So I'm at 8 to 2, I'm up 6, and I've got Jacqueline's ability behind this. One, two, three. Okay. Token one is a plus one. I need to be able to cancel that. Token two, the tentacle, so never mind, I am taking two horror off of this, and the skull, which is minus X, where X is the highest amount of doom in place. So I do have to cancel the tentacle, revealing the skull and the plus one. I get the three clues, but I do have to take two horror from that. And then action three, I'll pay two to play Word of Command, and I'll go get shriveling with this. Light for the saving of our eyes, heat for the saving of our skin, a spark for the saving of our souls. And there you are. That didn't take long. We'll take a quick look at shriveling after I give this Deck, after I give the deck a shuffle.
hopefully we can shuffle those weaknesses. And we've got a few of them in here at this point. Hopefully we can shuffle those nice and deep. There's a cut. And we'll take a look at shriveling as this will be Jacqueline's third action. Shriveling level five. Will two combat on commit uses four charges. Spending a charge to fight using will instead of combat. You get plus three will and deal plus two damage for this attack. But if you pull a bad symbol during the attack, take two horror. That will do it for Jacqueline. That will do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, we managed to duck enemies once again. So we'll flip everything over. Get everything reset. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline gains one resource and goes to seven. Mandy gains one and goes to three. Jacqueline draws. Enchanted Bow, level two. Three costs to play, lore, agility, and will agility on commit. Uses three charges. Action, spend the bow to fight using either will or agility instead of combat and get plus one skill value for the attack. Deal plus one damage. But as an additional cost to initiate this ability, you can spend one charge to have the attack target a non-elite enemy at a connecting location. If you do, ignore aloof and retaliate. Takes up both hands and the are an arcane slot. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we don't have to discard yet. Mandy draws. Hiking boots, level one. Two cost to play, agility on commit. Limit one footwear per investigator. You get plus one agility. And as a reaction, after the last ability clue is discovered from your location, exhaust hiking boots. Move to a connecting location with at least one clue or to a connecting unrevealed location. Mythos phase, we're going to put another Doom out and we're going to put it on Let the Storm Rage. Jacqueline will then draw. I should have reset her special ability as well. Jacqueline will draw. Hunted by Bayaki. Revelation test agility six. If you fail, reveal the top X cards of the encounter deck where X is the amount you failed by. If at least one Bayaki enemy is revealed by this effect, choose and draw one of them. And if at least one Omen Treachery is revealed by this effect, take one Horror. Shuffle the encounter deck. We're already down four, and I don't think we have any agility in hand. We have the Enchanted Bow. Do I commit that, go down three, and pray to God for a pull? No, I think I'm just going to get, I'm just going to let myself get domed. Besides, the encounter deck is actually, the encounter deck's completely fresh right now, so that frees Jacqueline's hand, hopefully, to be able to play out the, to be able to play out the, what you call, play, be able to play out shriveling. So let's see what we've got here. I'm not going to bother throwing Jacqueline's ability behind this anyway, for either. A plus one means she only fails by three. So that means we have to reveal the top three cards. First up we find a hex. We're, we're interested in Bayakis or Omens. There's an Omen, which means we'll have to take a horror from that. And, oh, I forgot to take Jacqueline's two horror from... Okay, so Jacqueline should be taking a total of three horror. I forgot to deal her two horror from her clairvoyance. And then we take another horror from revealing an omen on Hunted by Bayaki, which will then shuffle the encounter deck. So we duck the Bayakis, which means Jacqueline, which means my plan for Jacqueline's turn is, as of now, unchanged, but that's pending what Mandy draws in her encounter phase. Let 
or for her Mythos card. Speaking of which, let's find out what Mandy draws. So Mandy draws, marked by the sign, Peril, Revelation Test Will 2. If you fail, take two Horror. If the man in the pallid mask is in play, Horror by dealt by this effect is considered to be direct, and this test has plus two difficulty. Fortunately, the man in the pallid mask is not in play, and Mandy is up one, but I'm going to attach, I'm going to commit the Eye of Truth to it. To try to get away from that. So now we're up, now we're up five. Minus two means we clear that, so that goes to the victory display with the Eye of Truth attached to it. I'm mostly using that. I'm mostly committing the Eye of Truth to that, because if the Man in the Pallet Mask comes out later, I don't want to have that be a problem for us. But that's it for the Mythos phase. I'll exhaust Ancestral Knowledge to pull another skill from under it, so Mandy will draw. Survey the area. It's the same thing for as... Occult theory that Jacqueline has, but for lore and agility. Gains lore icons equal to your agility, which is three, and agility equal to your lore. Actually, four lore and six agility is what it is. I forgot Janae was in play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, just making sure we're all clear there. Investigation phase now, and this is going to be a fairly short investigation phase, but we'll join Jacqueline over at the map. Action one, Jacqueline's going to pay three resources. Where are you? Here you are. To play Shriveling. I'll get the four charges for that in a second. Four charges for Shriveling. I could probably use mini dice for this or something like that, but I like the fla I like these brassback tokens quite a bit. Now action two, Jacqueline will move into the broken steps, and that will. Lose her action three because we don't have an omen in the discard pile. As for Mandy, she will move into the broken steps for action one, which will lose her action two. See previous reason for Jacqueline. And for action three, I don't want to spend the six clues until I can move them in together. Um, I'm actually just going to spend two resources to play out her Essence of a Dream Diary. Which means we won't get Essence of the Dream until her turn begins, but still can be handy to have because we are at a location with four Shroud. So that will give her Essence of the Dream an extra two wildcard icons. But that will do it for Mandy. That will do it for the investigation phase. Again, a pretty short investigation phase. Enemy phase, even shorter. No, no enemies in play. So we'll flip everything over. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline will gain one resource and go to five. Mandy will gain one and go to two. Jacqueline will draw. Arcane Studies level four. Two cost to play, two will, two lore on commit. Uses two resources. Replenish them at the start of each round. As a free action, spend one resource from your pool or from Arcane Studies. You get plus one will or lore for the skill test. Let me just check her hand size. I think she's good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, she's still good there. Mandy draws. Mob Enforcer. Delightful. Prey Bearer Only. 433. Hunter. As an action, is spend four resources to parlay and discard Mob Enforcer. You knew you shouldn't have borrowed money from the O'Banion gang. It seems like they are always looking to collect at the worst times. Yeah, they are, taking one damage on attack. These guys do not have a good sense of timing. Mythos phase, none of their doom on the agenda, we'll put it on Let the Storm Rage. I'm committing to that being our path to Carcosa. Jacqueline will draw. 
Wizard of the Order spawning at any empty location. 422, retaliate. Force, at the end of the Mythos phase, place one Doom on Wizard of the Order. This I actually don't mind too much. I'm going to put him on... <sighs> We're probably going to have to move in. We might be able to get away from this Mob Enforcer, actually. I'm going to put him in Abbey Church and plan on Mandy being able to get away from the Mob Enforcer. Let's see, that was Jacqueline's card, so Mandy will draw. A Swift Bayaki, 2-3-2. Two, two. Prey, lowest remaining sanity. Hunter, retaliate. Forced, when Swift Bayaki would move via its Hunter keyword, instead, move it one location at a time until it reaches its Prey's location. If it moved more than one location by this effect, it does not attack this phase. Well, that kind of ch oh, that doesn't... Does that change my plans at all? Mmm... Now it kind of makes me wish I had grabbed a Storm of Spirits, but I can probably deal with this. I hope. Um... I think it'll probably be fine. I think Jacqueline can probably deal with both of them. Um, but we are putting a Doom on the Wizard of the Order at the end of the Mythos phase, and before we leave, Mandy will exhaust Ancestral Knowledge to pull the last skill, so she will find... Momentum, which we have another copy of in hand. That's it for the Mythos phase. Investigation phase, and the question now is do we send Jacqueline... Do we send Jacqueline Mobster and Bayaki hunting, or do we move her into Abbey Church and have her go Wizard of the Order hunting? Actually, I don't completely mind the Wizard of the Order being out right now. Because I can use him to kind of speed... I can use him to kind of speed the pace up a little bit. Where... His Doom will count for both agendas. So right now we're at... Th we're basically at three on Agenda 2A and one on 1C. One so I think for now, I'm just going to leave Jacqueline here and work on these mob... and work on these two enemies with Mandy. So... With that in mind, I think we are going to go to the investigation phase, and Jacqueline will come down to her play area. Action 1, Jacqueline's going to spend two resources for probably the only time we're going to use combat this scenario. We're going to use Spectral Razor. As an act, we can... We can fight adding will to the skill value for the attack, and immediately before the attack, you may engage the attacked enemy. This attack deals plus one damage, plus two instead if the enemy is non-elite. I'm going to target the swift Bayaki, and I'm going to engage it so friendly fire doesn't hit Mandy. The reason I'm going after the Bayaki with this and not the Mob Enforcer is because if you remember from, Emperor, from the Emperor 4, our first combat test is minus one combat. Despite this being, despite beginning to add our will to this test, this is still a combat test. So we're testing with our base combat. So one plus five is six. Jacqueline's up four, and I think that is where she will test. I'll have to trust that I don't pull. I'll, I'll have to trust that I don't pull something that causes me to fail, but we're up four. Minus two takes out the Swift Bayaki because we were doing plus two damage. And you're probably asking right now, Phoenix Knight, if you're that worried about failing, why not put Jacqueline's ability behind it? Two reasons for that. First, this isn't a terrible bag, especially when you're up four. And second, the charge of shriveling I'm going to aim at the Mob Enforcer for action two is going to get Jacqueline's ability behind it because I'm even more worried about friendly fire and I'm stepping into a four attack Four, four fight test against a mob enforcer rather than the two that we had with the Bayaki. So, Jacqueline is up eight. She's up four and pulling three tokens.
One, two, three. All right, do I have three? Yes, I do. Okay, good. Token one, the Elder Sign, which will try to cancel that, but I might need it to protect from taking more horror. Token two, the Tentacle, so I will, I'll have to use that to protect from failing the test. And token three is the Rune, oh boy. That's gonna require me to reveal another token. So I've gotta go back into the bag. Fortunately, the tentacle is already out, so I'd have to pull. A minus one won't do it, so I do have to cancel the tentacle to prevent from failing the test. The rune revealed means I take two horror. That gets resolved before the damage goes out. And then since I still survive, the minus one and the elder sign essentially cancel each other out. The mob enforcer is defeated, but it was almost a very dangerous test, and it's a good thing I didn't. It's probably a good thing I didn't put the abil put Jacqueline's ability behind the attack on the Bayaki. Then action three, Jacqueline will play emergency cash to gain three resources and draw a card, so she'll go back up to six, and then she'll draw. Lost soul, oh boy. All right, check the campaign log. We have more conviction than doubt, so we'll be testing will X, where X is, wait, more conviction than doubt, yes. Testing will X, where X is my lore. If I fail, I take two damage. So that's a five, so I'm testing will X, where X is my lore. I'm testing against a three, I'm up two. And I don't think I have anything I want to commit. Do I? Uh, no, but Mandy does. Mandy's going to commit quick thinking, so I can maybe get a little bit of a tempo swing on this one. So Jacqueline is now up three on the test. And if she succeeds by at least two, Mandy gets an additional action. Plus one means Jacqueline's clear, and Mandy gets to take an additional action. That, along with probably Mandy's turn, will take us over to the map. Mandy's quick thinking action will bring us over after we spend six clues as a group to Abbey Church. She'll make friends with the Wizard of the Order while she's over there. We'll take a look at what's over here, we find. Shroud of three, two clues. If there are two agendas in play with two different agenda numbers, Abbey Church gets plus two shroud, so it's actually a five shroud. Forced, when Abbey Church is revealed, put the set aside Care Gothique, Knight's Hall, Cloister, Chapel of St. Aubert, and Abbey Tower into play. So this is going to turn into quite the mess over here. Let me see if I can, let me see how I want to make these connections. Um, let's see, Caragotique down here, Chapel of St. Aubert, Cloister, Abbey Tower, and Knight's Hall. This side of the, let me see if I can make this a little bit smaller, and I need five more connecting arrows for this. Four, five, I believe these are both are these both two-way connections? Yes, that's a two-way. Actually, that one's not going to be a two-way connection. That... Okay, I think I want this here? No. I think I want this here. We'll connect like that. Like so. Thusly. And like that. So our unrevealed locations that are re relevant right now, actually the only one that's relevant right now, is the Chapel of St. Aubert. The way to the Chapel of St. Aubert is hidden. You can't enter the, the Chapel of St. Aubert unless you have 
found a guide. Waves crash violently upon the rocks. The chapel stands lonely against the rain, barely able to survive the storm's onslaught. So we're going to have to do some exploring here. Anyway, after all of that, that's it for Jacqueline's turn. Mandy's first order of business at start of turn is going to be to suspend a charge from Eon Chart to try to evade the Wizard of the Order. She's up two. Where's the bag? Bag's back here. So this is Mandy's, this is a free action from Eon Chart. Minus one gets her away from the Wizard of the Order, as planned. And then she's going to move up to the Cloister, where she will find... I'll take a look here. The open arcade of the, mon of the Cloister is normally restricted to the Monastery's monks and religious leaders. But with the Abbey seemingly abandoned, it takes little effort for you to sneak your way in. So this reveals into... Shroud of two, or Shroud of one, two clues. If there are no clues on Cloister, parlay, testing will or lore 4. If you succeed, remember that you have found the tower key. A lone monk patrols the covered walk, surrounding himself in whispered prayer. A large ring of brass keys hangs from the sash around his waist. Okay, so we need two clues for that. Action 1 for Mandy is going to be to play, is going to be to investigate, and I don't think I'm going to commit anything. To, actually, at start of turn, Mandy gets her Essence of the Dream. I think this is the first time this campaign we've seen it, so we'll take a look. It's just a two wildcard commit, which we're not at a, shroud, a location with four shrouds, so we don't get the extra two. And when Essence of the Dream would enter your discard pile or be shuffled into your deck, Instead, set it out aside, out of play with your bonded cards. Faction 1 will be to investigate, and I'll use that for a free commit. Actually, no, I won't use that for a free commit yet. So we're up. We're up 5. Plus one gets her a clue. Action two will run the investigate back. Still up five. A minus two gets her the other clue. And action three now we'll do the parlay, and now we'll commit Essence of the Dream. Yeah. Now we'll commit Essence of the Dream, so we're at 6, 8, to 4, we're up 4. Minus one means we get to ex means, means we get to remember that we found the tower key. So this resource is going to indicate that we've done that. So that will do it for Mandy. That will do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase. The Wizard of the Order is the only enemy that's been evaded. Is that's in play. So we'll reset everything, including the Wizard of the Order. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline gains one resource and goes to seven. Mandy gains one and goes to three. Jacqueline draws. Class with Black Onyx. Delightful. While it's in your hand, increase the cost of each other card in your hand by one. I'll go through the flavor text when I, pl when I finally play that out. Mandy draws. Another copy of the Eye of Truth, which we used earlier to great effect. 
Mythos phase will put another Doom on Let the Storm Rage, so we're up to effectively four on that because of the Wizard of the Order. One on Ritual Begins. Jacqueline draws. Mysterious Chanting, which places two Doom on the nearest cultist enemy, which will place two more Doom on the Wizard of the Order. Fortunately, it doesn't cause the agenda to advance. Mandy draws. Worlds Merge. We saw this earlier. Uh, this, I think, is going to be worth another copy of the... Um, right now, I'm at even against that. I am actually going to use... I'm actually going to commit both Eureka and the Eye of Truth. I want the extra cards, but I also want to be able to get that into the victory display with the Eye of Truth attached to it. So, with that in mind, I'm up... Alright, I was even. I'm up five right now. Minus two means we get everything off of that. So World's Merge goes into the victory display, also with the Eye of Truth attached to it. And Mandy will get three cards. We'll get to search her deck for her top three of her deck for a card and draw it. I'm going to go. Actually, do I want to go three deep or do I want two targets? I think I want. What am I even looking for right now? Um. I wouldn't mind Milan, but it's a little late for him to show up. Let's let's go three deeper. One, two, three, four, five, six. First card up. In the no, which we can use to investigate any location. Next up. Death 13, which is a little late to the party. Next up. Empirical Hypothesis, which is her customizable card. Next up, another Empirical Hypothesis. Survey the area, and Amnesia. Well, I definitely don't want Amnesia. Um, I think I'll just take Survey the area, because I can always use more options for evasion. All right, so that's unexhausted. I could potentially use the Doom effect, I could potentially use the Agenda effect now on Let the Storm Rage to sweep the, to sweep the Wizard of the Order clear of Doom. Because remember, the Doom on the Agenda would cause it to advance. And if I'm right, if I'm right on committing to that Agenda, that deck to go through, then we can potentially have a short scenario. And actually, since this is a free action, it's before it's technically before the Mythos phase would be over, so I will spend the clues to sweep the Doom clear and put the last Doom to advance Let the Storm Rage. So let's see what we've got here. We have... The Path to Carcosa. The ritual is almost complete. All that is left is to find the gate and step through. Remove the, the remainder of this agenda deck from the game and replace it with the set aside Act 3A card. Advance to that Act card. So we got very lucky on that one. So we need Act 3A. Open the path below. The tidewater churns around the walls of the city. Layers of reality unfold. Reflected in the depths below you, you can see the twisted spires of Carcosa. You have no choice but to dive in. Objective. If each undefeated investigator is at the Chapel of St. Aubert, and there are no clues on that location, advance. Okay, so we need to get moving very quickly, and that makes, that makes Jacqueline's turn for me very simple. So... With that, let's move over to the, let's move into the investigation phase 
and go say hello to Jacqueline over at the map. Order of business number one for Miss Fine. Wizard of the Order needs to go bye-bye. Action one, it should move over to Abbey Church and make friends with him. Action two, we'll aim a charge of shriveling at his face and put Jacqueline's ability behind it. Twilla, Twilla, Twilla. Twilla, Twilla, my dear Twilla. Wherefore art thou Twilla? One, two, three. Okay. First up, we find... The Tentacle again. Great. We're going to have to cancel that. We're up by four, so we need to pull a lot of these to fail. The Skull, which is not great. So Jacqueline's going to have to take another two horror and... Minus two. So we do have to cancel the... The Skull is actually the highest number of Doom on an agenda in play, which right now is zero. So we do have to cancel the Tentacle, which means Jacqueline's taking another two horror. That's not good, Jacqueline. Wizard of the Order goes bye-bye, at least. Um, then we're going to move to... We need to find a guide to get to the Chapel of St. Aubert. So... That was action two. Action three, I'm going to send Jacqueline to Shergotique. Since that's our connection to the Abbey Tower, we have found the tower key. A large pool of blood spreads slowly across the floor, leading down the Shergotique. And this finds... Shroud of three, two clues. As an action, place one Doom on the current A agenda, heal two damage, group limit once per game... Two clues. That's not actually that useful for us right now because we have no A agenda thanks to now finding that that's where we need to that the path below is where we need to go. But that will do it for Jacqueline, so that'll bring us into Mandy's turn. Start of her turn because of Dream Diary, she gets the essence of the dream back. Then we're going to speed walk her action one to Abbey Church. Actually I could stop here. No, that's, there's really no point trying to grab those clues off unless Jacqueline goes to get them. She's got to draw into the flame for that, though. Action two, she'll move to the Shergotique. And action three, she'll go up to the Abbey Tower, and we have found the Tower Key. Actually, I probably should have mentioned this when Jacqueline moved into Shergotique. The door leading up to the Abbey Tower is locked. You can't enter the Abbey Tower unless you have found the Tower Key, which we have. Dark lightning crashes throughout the air. Surrounding the top of the tower is a whirlwind of black clouds and bellowing wind. This flips into... Shroud of Two, Six Clues. As you peer into the vortex above, you can see the hooded shape of Big Yellow looming beyond, hand outstretched. His laughter echoes throughout your mind. Victory Two. So this is not where we need to go to get the to find the guide that we need to get into Chap Chapel of St. Aubert. Instead, that's just a mess of clues, but we do have a charge of Eon chart that we can pop, and I'm betting it's going to be in Knight's Hall where we need to go. So, Eon chart one, Eon chart two, and let's see what's here. Rows of sym symmetrical stone pillars give this hall a sense of calm serenity that clashes with the torrent outside. Flips into... Shroud of three, two clues. Action, if there are no clues on Knight's Hall, test combat or agility three. If you succeed, remember that you have found a guide. You hear pounding on a nearby door as one of the Abbey's monks tries to escape the destruction outside. Let me in, he cries, panicked. Please, I beg you. So I'll get the two clues for that. And that will do it for Mandy. That will do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, right now we have no enemies in play because Jacqueline was kind enough to take care of the... Jacqueline was kind enough to take care of the Wizard of the Order for us. So, we'll flip everything over. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase.
Jacqueline gains one resource, goes to eight. Mandy gains one and goes to four. That should be reset as well. Jacqueline draws. Word of Command, which I can use to go get another spell if I need to. What I need right now is Twilla. Actually, this is going to be really bad because, oh boy, I just realized something. Mandy draws. We have a big problem on our hands, but I'll get into more why in a minute. Amnesia. Choose and discard all but one card from your hand. Wait, where am I? What was I doing? So I need to keep... So I'm only keeping one card off of this. I will keep... I'm going to keep a survey of the area because I'm going to need that. Essence of the Dream goes back. And here's our problem. So we put one... We put a, So we're going to the Mythos phase right now, okay? We're putting a Doom up, but we have to put it on the Ritual Begins because that's our C agenda. Because we've been taking a fair amount of horror, unfortunately... Jacqueline's has to, Jacqueline's big ho big yellow's gaze now triggers, where after a doom is placed on the sea agenda, which we just did, we have to take two horror and discard big yellow's gaze from her hand. So Jacqueline has actually been defeated by by sanity, which means she'll be taking a mental trauma coming out of this scenario. So that is very unfortunate and very badly timed on my part, which means Mandy's alone now, so everything should move a lot faster. Mandy, though, will draw. Title Terror. Spawn at Port, of, Port de Lavance or Chapel of St. Aubert, and it's a hunter, of course. When the tide is high, they emerge from the sea to feed. One damage, two sanity on attack. So spawns at Chapel of St. Aubert, of course it does. And it's connected to Abbey Church. Delightful. That was very badly timed. So... We're into the investigation phase now, and Mandy's turn is going to take us over to the map. As a free action, Essence of the Dream comes to her hand. Mandy will then pop the last charge of her, essence, of her Eon charts to investigate twice. So she's up three... Minus three gets her a clue. And then she will run the investigate back. Still up three. Skull is minus one right now. Yep. So Mandy gets the last clue off of... The, of, off of Knight's Hall. She can at least take a few attacks from the title Terror if we need to. I'm hoping we don't need to, but we'll see what happens here. Action one, she is going to test agility, and we're going to commit survey the area, so that's going to give her another six agility, which means she'll be at ten to four, or ten to three, she's up seven. Minus two says Mandy has found the guide, which means we can get into the Chapel of St. Aubert when we're ready to do that. So that was action one. Action two, I'm going to try to rebuild her hand a little bit, so I'm going to draw a card. Mandy will draw. In the no, which is moderately helpful, but not really right now. Action three, she'll draw another card. Mandy will draw. Shocking Discovery. This just gets shuffled back into the deck on a revelation. This would be worse if it was among the searched cards when we search. Fortunately for us, though, it is not.
That will do it for Mandy. That'll do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, the title terror moved up to Abbey Church. is going to be coming from Mandy and pretty much in nothing flat. But with that, we'll go ahead and reset everything. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase, and I'll meet you there with the new battery. Mandy gains one resource going to five and then draws. Another copy of Eon Chart, which is very well timed, assuming we survive with it in the hand. Mythos phase, second Doom goes up on the on agenda 1C. And then Mandy will draw. The Pale Mask beckons. If the man in the Pallid Mask is in play, he attacks each investigator in player order regardless of the regardless of current location. If the man in the Pallid Mask is not in play, search his bearer's deck and discard pile for him. Draw him and shuffle his bearer's deck. Resolve this effect even if his bearer is currently eliminated, searching all out of play areas. So we do need to go get the man in the pallid mask out of Jacqueline's deck. And of course there was the one card that could have saved her and Twilla was way toward the bottom. There you are. The man in the pallid mask, 434. Spawn at the location farthest from all investigators, which will be probably Port de Lavance, aloof. As an action, investigate. Your location gets plus two shroud for this investigation. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues, defeat the man in the pallid mask. Indeed, it's time. We have all laid aside disguise but you. Robert W. Chambers, the mask, the king in yellow. Like I said, I'm expecting the furthest location away. One, two, three, four. Two, three. One, two, three, four. I could either choose the outer wall or Port de Lavance. I'm going to choose Port de Lavance for this. That's it for... The Mythos phase, Investigation phase, and Mandy's... Actually, we're going to stay right here at Mandy's play area. Action 1 for Mandy will be... Not the clues. Resources. We'll be swapping out the Eon chart due to slot pressure for a fresh one. I'll get two secrets... And an exhaustion token, because I'm immediately going to exhaust it to head over to the map. Now that we lost Jacqueline, the plan here is to get out of this scenario as fast as we can. So, I'm going to move down to the Abbey Church, which will make friends with the title Terror. And then I'm going to try to evade it. We're... Here we are, committing Essence of the Dream. I only get the two wild cards because I'm not at a location with four or more shroud. But as it is, I'm up... Let's see, three, five, six. As it is, I'm up four trying to evade. So let's hope this works. A zero. Perfect. So that gets us away from the title terror. That will go back to our bonded cards. Action two, I'll move down to the Chapel of St. Aubert, since that's where we need to be. We also need to clear it of clues. So let's see what we find here. We find... Shroud of three, four clues. You can only discover clues in the Chapel of St. Aubert if you have three or fewer remaining sanity. As an action, take up to three horror. In the water below, you can see the spires of Carcosa. You are almost there. You need to only open the gate. Mandy has taken exactly no sanity, no horror, though. So I'm not quite ready to start discovering clues yet. That would have been really handy for Jacqueline to come down to, but she had to bite it on sanity. Let's see, so action one was playing the Eon chart. Then the Eon chart to move down and evade the title Terror. Then action three to, then action two to come down here which I can actually exhaust Janae to send a clue up to the Abbey Church. Kind of cheating that a little bit, but it'll work. And then action three, Mandy will draw a card. She will draw. Ariadne's Twine, which we saw earlier. And unfortunately, we still can't dis 
can't investigate yet because we still have we still have too much sanity, which that might be something worth remedying next turn. But that will do it for Mandy. That'll do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, the title terror is evaded. So I'll go ahead and reset everything. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Mandy will gain one resource going to four, and then she will draw. Empirical Hypothesis, which is not particularly useful right now. At the start of the round, choose one... Oh, I'm not going to rattle off all the criteria because I don't think we're playing that. Mythos Phase puts our third Doom up on the Ritual Begins. And then Mandy draws. Spires of Carcosa. Attaching to your location and place two Doom on that location. If there's no Doom there, discard it. As an action, investigate. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues here, remove one Doom from the attached location. So we need to get Mandy's sanity. I'm going to put the two Doom on that. Fortunately, it doesn't cause the agenda to advance. What I need to do here is I need to get Mandy's sanity down a little bit, but I also want to be able to discover those clues in one shot. So, digging for the... Actually, we might be able to cheese this a little bit. I'm thinking here. Because if I can move... Hmm, how do I want to do this is the question. Well, as a fast action, I think I will use Ashley's information to take a Doom off of... Um, we're going to be advancing next round, so that's actually not that useful right now. <sighs> okay, so... The plan here is I'm going to probably use the title Terror to cheese this a little bit. Basically, right now, I'm on a desperate dig for... I'm on a desperate dig for my other deduction. I used one early in the scenario, and the other one was not underneath. Oh, my neighbor's at it again. My, de my other de deduction is somewhere in the deck, so I'm probably going to be going on a desperate dig for it. But I need to work on getting my sanity down in the meantime, and I can probably get a little help from the title terror on that, since I'm going to be up at least... I'm going to be up at least three trying to evade, because I'll have Essence of the Dream when I'm ready to evade that. So, that will bring us into the investigation phase, and Mandy will stay right here at her play area. Start of Mandy's turn, Essence of the Dream comes to her hand. Action one, we're going to draw a card, so Mandy will draw... Dr. Milan, not... This is probably not the time I wanted to see him. Action 2 will draw. Strange Solution, which is probably... Well, I might be able to use that to try to get rid of the title Terror. But that's going to be attacking with a base combat. Action 3, I think I'll take... I think Action 3, I'll take... Three horror because what that'll do is when the title terror comes in, if I can evade him, I can get to work on getting those clues. So I will take three horror from that. Very uneventful turn for Mandy in the Chapel of St. Aubert. Enemy phase, the title terror comes over, makes friends with Mandy, and hits her for one damage and two sanity. So if I can get away from him, I can start discovering some of those clues. And two Sanity, which I could put on Janae if I need to, but I'm kind of leaning on her a little bit. Especially for the evasion aspect. So, I'll go ahead and reset everything. And then we'll transition into the upkeep phase. Mandy gains one resource going to five, and then draws... Another empirical hypothesis. Probably not that useful. Mythos phase, we are advancing Agenda 1C. I'm hoping this gamble didn't, didn't backfire on me, but we'll find out soon enough.
Blue Star's demise. As the vortex grows in size and force, so too does its pull on reality. Debris and rubble starts to float upwards, pulling it pulled into the terrible void. A thunderous crash shakes the island to its very core. Soon, the whole city will be destroyed by the maelstrom. Shuffle the encounter discard pile and both set aside copies of Rift Seeker into the encounter deck. Check the current A agenda. If agenda 1A is not the current A agenda, which it's not, do not mark any conviction or doubt. So that'll give us both copies of Rift Seeker along with the discard pile back into the deck. Okay. Alright, so that's all shuffled, and we'll take a look at Agenda 2C. The entity above. The whirlwind over the island continues to rage. Blinding flashes of lightning and deafening thunder assault your senses. Is the vortex above the key to opening the path? If so, you have no choice but to beckon the entity closer. Each monster enemy gets plus one fight. And as a fast action, the investigators spend one per investigator clues as a group. To place one doom on this agenda, it can cause the current can cause this agenda to advance. Each investigator draws one card. Group limit once per round. Well, we know that the agenda, we know that the path forward is the path below because we saw that earlier. Mandy draws. An acolyte spawns at any empty location. After it enters play, place a doom on it. It was only a small sacrifice. One damage on attack, and it's a three-one-two. I'm going to spawn him at the granite outer wall. It doesn't really matter where I put him. But that's it for the mythos phase. We'll move into the investigation phase next, and I suspect we'll stay right here at Mandy's play area. Mandy should be able to pass a three lore test in her sleep. But the evasion, I think she's going to need a little more help on, so that will be first. She'll commit Essence of the Dream to that, to go up four, five, six. She's up four trying to evade. A zero will work nicely, so the title terror is evaded. Then we'll exhaust Eon Chart, taking a chart, taking a secret off of it to get a free invest, to get two free investigates. So Mandy once again is up three. This is where I was hoping for deduction, but no luck. So we are indeed going to be up three though. That is a zero, that gets her another clue. This is where I could potentially cheese it a little bit, could I? Move out with Eon Chart to pull a clue out. Action two, move back. Yeah, this actually works. So I'll move out to Abbey Church for action, for with her Eon Chart, with her second Eon Chart action. Then I'll exhaust Janae to move a clue from Chapel to Abbey Church. We're not getting the victory off of that anyway. Action two, I'll bring her back into the chapel. I'm actually away from the map on this one, but I'm, well, I'm, I'm trying to narrate everything so it's all clear. Then action three, she'll investigate again. She'll up, she's up three. Just to give me a little insurance, I'm going to commit, I'm going to commit a copy of Empirical Hypothesis to bring her up four. And remember, we have three remaining sanity. So we actually can discover clues.
A well-loved minus one gets us the last clue. And because we're at... Because we're at the Chapel of St. Aubert, our only undefeated investigator is at the chapel, and there are no clues there, so we get to advance. To Carcosa, only you can stop Big Yellow from escaping his prison. You dive into the churning waters and open the path to Carcosa, the realm of madness. R1. With that, let's move back up top for R1. We're all set, so let's get into R1. Resolution 1. You hold your breath as you swim through freezing water towards spires below. As you get closer, you see ripples throughout the water as though you are peering into a reflection upon the sea's surface. You break through the surface and gasp as air fills your lungs. In your campaign log, record that you opened the path below. Remove all cultist, rune, and elder thing tokens from the chaos bag. Then... Add two cultists and two rune tokens to the cast bag. If Ashley Clark, Songs Die Unheard, is in the victory display, record her name in your campaign log under VIPs Slain. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. I just added the two cultists to the, to the cast bag because we had two runes in that we had to, had to add from last week as from last week's scenario as well and I've got to swap a zero out with the skull to go back in so as far as experience is concerned we picked up one two which admittedly we're not doing much with but it's better than a sharp stick in the eye but that will do it for this playthrough of return to black stars rise later this afternoon we'll do the, t the tarot reading for the final scenario of the fall campaign Wednesday we're playing Anne's End, Thursday, and that's a night you don't hear often on the channel, Mandy, Mandy, Jacqueline, and I will be paying a visit to Jester, to Jester's channel as we get together to play Arkham Horror, the card game. We'll be doing a Carcosa-themed side scenario, and I'll explain more about what I mean by a Carcosa-themed side scenario on Thursday. Next week, we're going through the final scenario of the fall campaign, Return to Dim Carcosa. Just to be a little bit more clear... The, the tarot reading that we're doing this afternoon is going to be for Return to Dim Carcosa. I haven't run this by Jester yet, but the plan is for our scenario on Thursday, we're going to... We, I've got to talk to him about that yet, but the plan is if we do a tarot reading, we'll do a separate tarot reading for that one before we start. Just wanted to make sure I was clear on that. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.